For now. Is being a boss a challenge for you? Like big time. To, trying to be like hard love on the people you love? Big time. Big time. Because I'm I'm a lead by example. So yep. I come from sports. So it's like the coach only really, or especially in fighting, like I only heard from when I messed up. So that's my personality. But you got to remember not every, like especially people, these creatives and producers and editors, they're not from my world. So mm -hmm. they need acknowledgement, like doing a great job, which I'm really bad at. Why is he only realizing this in his 40? Why is he bragging about this? You've allegedly been a beast of businessman for ages. You've had a podcast since the 2010s and stuff you've been around rogan why does it only learn now in your 40s that like you're coming up to 40 years old now you learn people need encouragement people need arms around the shoulder people aren't all that you hire aren't athletes they're not trying to be ufc fighters huh this is how you learned that just now because i'm from sports so of course you're supposed to score touchdowns what do you what do you think you're here for yeah so yeah you score touchdowns but they don't say anything you throw an interception you can hear from them so that's just my mentality. I have the so I gotta same do better. exact mentality. I got to do, do a better job being like, great, which I'm getting better at being like, hey, great job. <laughs> I love these like self-deprecating, almost self-deprecating, humble brag things that they do. It's the LA thing is what you lot of people are doing. Like you don't really want to change. So you mention stuff that's like easy for you to kind of fess up and admit that won't hurt your ego too much. So it makes you look human. Then you're not really addressing anything, you know? You just kind of, it's kind of performative. It's a little bit just like for the sake of it. Let's just say this to make it sound good. Does that make you a better father? Because uh, I feel like sometimes you feel like a dad when you're like, for example, like my sister came and she sacrificed her career. She was going up really high in Apple and um, she was already like literally paving her, her future out until I had enough of dealing with scumbags in LA, LA. So I go, hey, like I need you to move out. It's the time. Like I need you to start managing and helping me out yep. and doing stuff. And um, I love that because my brother's my manager. Exactly. So yeah. she's my, she's like, she helps coordinate all these things. But when we first started bumping heads, there's like one, we had to get who demands that from their siblings is that just different sibling relationships do you ever stand there like hey you need to quit your job and come help work for me like who does that? they want to come do that for you fair enough but isn't that weird get rid of the idea of like we're brother and sister working can't have it can't have that and then also it's like i for example like reed he he's like the way i, I treat him is different than how i treat my girlfriend when we work together versus how i treat uh jessica and i realize now as an adult i have to be different to each one and coordinate to their feelings and before i grew up watching people that i looked up to and they would always tell me fuck their feelings get it done I and i and i realized that's not the right way to do it because it depends it de i i agree for the most part it's probably not the right way to do it and you're making a lot of enemies doing it that way but I'm, you, you have the same problem as me is I'm too nice where I'll keep people around for so long where you know I have to let a person go uh, <laughs> BGL I think he's talking about you BGL let's zoom in BGL if you're watching this I think he's talking about you or if you've watched this I'm sure you know he's talking about you BGL he's talking about you a few months ago and everybody in my life's like you gotta get rid of that guy you gotta I'm mm -hmm. like, but he's so nice he's yep. my friend yep boundaries and, though you gotta set boundaries I know I'm really bad at it so really I, at I it. just got oh BGL did you hear that BGL he's trying to suggest that everybody here his life said that you shouldn't he shouldn't hang out with that you shouldn't hang out with him you were a bad influence on the jump they never liked none of those people like is that true or is he trying to project a kind of safe face that is crazy isn't it i just got good at it because this is how i saw it there was somebody that i had in my life that i loved for a very long time we would do business together and he crossed the line with me how but, so uh do when it, it so yeah, I can, I can explain it. So I won't mention the name, obviously, but I basically put a very good opportunity in front of them. Like so much so that I would have cried if Logan gave me that same opportunity th the, when it came to finances and like all that. Logan, when he came into my life, he goes, I'm going to open the door and that's it. And so I learned from that. That's all you need. That's all you need, right? That's you need the I door. Want. That's all I want. So what I was doing. You didn't, you didn't do that to BGL. You didn't want shout out BJ again. BJ can be all the things he wants. Again, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of that, you know, as Ariel called him, what do you call him? That old looking Mufasa guy, right? I'm not a fan of his. But BGL, when he was around Brendan, was his ride or die. He was in fucking bushes, handing that guy fucking glasses of whiskey, right? Like he was really ride or die. Did Brendan ever go in on the fucking UBC what was his thing called? Haters will say show. Did Brendan go on it once? Did Brendan mention haters will say on the fighting the kid? Not once. Did Brendan invite BGL to sit? on the podcast and speak like actually speak as a guest so he didn't really open doors for anybody everyone that kind of everyone basically used him platform and kind of did what they needed to do but it wasn't like he opened doors for them really they just did what they needed to do in it they kind of figured it out so this whole opening doors thing is hilarious because logan definitely did help this guy out a big time that's why he's super appreciative and clearly still has love for the guy but come on 
Brendan. Come on, brother. The thing is, I was busting my ass for him, and I wasn't expecting a damn thing Nor beside giving me the exposure and giving me the time. Perfect. Right? That's how my relationship with him, and I, and I would cry myself to sleep being grateful for it. Yep. Because, for example, look what I have now, all because he says, no, I like this kid. I want him on my show. Correct. Right. I gave him that plus more, two times more money than I started with. Just because I don't worship money, and for me to practice not worshiping money, yep. I like to put money in the pockets of people that I love and have them be fruitful, and all I ask is know that it doesn't come from me, it comes from God, and then two, go out and do the same. Yep. So this is how I try to plant Love my it. garden. Yep. He made it seem like it was insulting what I offered him. Interesting. And that shattered me. Isn't that wild? When you re Shat realize how bad, like, I don't want to say he's a bad person, I don't know who you're talking about, but same thing, I've given people some opportunities, and where it goes south, whatever reason, they take no ownership. No, 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 not whatever reason. I like how he doesn't take any ownership or accountability of what he could have done. What do you think you could have done that would make somebody who was willing to stand in bushes on live streams, in fucking bush pots and shit, holding a fucking glass of whiskey, what makes you think that guy turns into another guy? Like, how's that happen? What, what could drive someone to do that? Maybe owing them money? Maybe not giving them any, you know, encouragement? Maybe dismissing their work, maybe, you know, using all their personal stories and anecdotes as pe parts of your material when they keep telling you not to do so. Those things might get on people's nerves, isn't it? But again, it's all their fault. Above it, and then it's like, oh, he's a bad guy. I'm like, what? I hope, are you kidding me? All the shit I did for you? <laughs> I like, see, he can never be a bad guy. Look at this. <laughs> Brendan, please seek help. See the light. Sometimes you can be a bad guy. I know you think you're the best guy in the world and you're the beast of a dad, beast of a stand up, beast, beast, beast. But sometimes you can be a bad guy. And then they paint you as the villain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, yeah. And then that, you realize, I would, like, would want to kill myself over that, bro. I don't How do care. you forget you a thousand though. things that you I would do? George, you shouldn't, though, because but, you know you know you're a good person. Look at all these people. Like, yeah. <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> you know you're a good person, so I don't care. It's like, yep, yeah, all right, that's your narrative. You want to run with that? It's like, it's not go that I do care that. This is exactly what you're not here anymore. It's just that you were my brother, or you were my sister, or you were my cousin in my eyes. So it's like, BJ was your brother. You like, bro, brother. like, it hurts. I sacrificed mm -hmm. myself for you. When other people in the industry wouldn't sacrifice, they would just give me an opportunity. Yep. There's a difference from giving somebody an opportunity and sacrificing yourself yep. for them. Okay, so I do that, and every time. I lose one person, I lose the other person. I would literally sit here and I would cry to her and I would literally pray out to God and God, open my eyes and heart. If it's me and I'm the piece of shit, correct me. But then all of a sudden my eyes start opening and once that you cross a line with me, what happens then is then I monitor your past behavior. And that's interesting. So you praise to God to find out whether or not he's the douchebag or they are. And every single time God keeps saying that I'm not the douchebag crazy isn't it that's mad every time you pray god tells you you're not the goose douchebag interesting it's fucked up because i'm very analytic so if you did something wrong to me and we were friends i'd forget about it yeah because i don't like holding shit in my heart no there's no need for it you're yeah. a human being you're gonna fuck up and move <laughs> on right but if you get to a level where you cross that line with me and we take that time apart from each other and I sit there quietly and I reminisce with all the things you did to hurt me. You see so, so many com a common theme. You're like, oh my God, how did I not it's see this? It's a pattern and not potential. Yes. And I think we do that in every relationship. Mm -hmm. We fall in love with a certain person or a thing and go, well, if he acts like this, then it'll be perfect. Or if she acts like this, then it'll be perfect. You don't like, see the downside. You need to start realizing the pattern and and realizing that if this person is not uh at least not, I, I don't even ask people don't try to rocket ship me i don't need you to be my fuel no but i need you to be my friend yeah i don't need you to be an anchor yep. so like if you're holding still and, and your your decisions are decisions that i wouldn't take pride in like for example if you're doing something that is shady to somebody else you are me bro when you're hanging out with me Correct. you're reflecting me and, and, and i don't operate like that exactly i don't move like that and if you move like that, then you gotta move. You separate. can do that, yeah. But I don't want to be part of it. Exactly, bro. And here's the thing, George. This is gonna happen again and, and again. again, bro. I, it's it breaks my heart. But uh, I have the thickest skin for it now. I'm is that what the thickest boy, the thickest skin? All lies. Everybody runs away from you because you're bad for business, brother. You're quite toxic. You're pretty toxic, especially with the Canon rapes and your dramas. It's just too much. People just run. Because normal people can't handle it. Normal people, when they put out Instagram posts, they don't want to be inundated with a flood of people saying Addies. 
house socials, drug walks. You know what I mean? Like they don't want that. They just want to put out a, a, a thing, maybe get trolled a bit, get some LOLs, but get some fire emojis, some heart eye emojis. That's it. But when they get associated with you, they immediately get locked into the vortex of your Philippine nonsense because you don't seem able to take apparent accountability, sorry, for your actions and how it may have influenced some people's decision or idea of what you like as a person. He just doesn't see it. That's what we're saying here is a classic, 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 classic narcissist, like classic, doesn't see anything, any wrong in his actions whatsoever somehow he's a special ordained one this one even kind of said it as well he prayed to god and god didn't show him that he was a dick piece of shit that was hilarious little line there they call you thick boy yeah i guess <laughs> <laughs> how do you deal with it bro like at what point you just take it, it, on, it gets you, easier you do right nothing you ignore them you re you learn from the mistake and you realize it's going to happen again and you you uh, uh hire slow fire fast